So it's a uh, print, uh, print and play prototyping day today and uh, we're doing burger up. So Matt over here had the idea that uh, we should document the process and also um, give you guys an idea of sort of how to make a print and play and uh, this is the same process that we used for Entropy as well as uh, Rise to Power and also for um, oh, a bunch of other games, uh, prototypes that we've made uh, to date. So this is a, a nice easy way. Um, everything that we do, uh, we don't use um, professional grade uh, equipment. Um, it's all off the shelf, easily accessible stuff, including the print. We just go to our local quick print shop to make them. Um, they're easy, they're convenient, they're available, you know, they're open on weekends and uh, this is the reason why we use them. Otherwise we probably would have chosen um, a better quality uh, print house to do a lot of that prototype, but given it's a prototype, it's, it's totally fine. So, uh, see you in a bit. Like two files in here that I like printed. Yeah, you right. um, I like the, that in one of them is in A3. I think it, uh, on the file name it should just say A3, on the other one it should say A4. And um, both of them are on the A3 and 200 TSM. Mm -hmm. And the A4 is 150 GSM, both on one paper. Oh, we can have all the files first. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. Need to be on this side. Uh, so we've got two files that we've got. We're going to print one is an A3 page and one is an A4 size. The A4 is used for the um, uh, smaller tokens, whereas the A3 is used for the larger cards. And um, for, the A th for the A3 one, we're actually going to bond the top paper and the bottom paper um, together to form an effective about 300 GSMs. Um, whereas the A4 one is 150 and it's going to be bonded on to a array board. So we've got um, just the uh, print. And those two, that one's just in the A3, yeah. Um, yep. And that's a uh, 200 GSM bond paper mm -hmm. um, and if you go to print um, I just keep it in actual size um, and turn it oh yeah to A4 yeah. A3, A3. So, yeah. okay awesome thanks Okay, so it's important to keep it to actual size rather than fit so that it, the image doesn't actually shrink. Um, generally, when you have a full bleed, um, that bleed is going to get then automatically get calculated and shrunk. Um, that's why we want to keep it to um, uh, a proper fit, 100% um, actual size if you can. So I think there's um, like 13 pages of this. Um, of this document? 18? Uh, 18, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Was it 200 bond? Yes, the 200 bond, thank you. So, um, the place where we got this from, uh, they can do up to 300 GSM, but if you do two 300 GSMs, then you've got an effective about a uh, 450, 500 kind of thickness um, paper, and that's a bit much. So, um, 200 GSM and bonded is probably the best. Um, yeah, and with the, um, with the A4 tokens, um, you don't want to go to 200 GSM because what we're going to do is we're going to sandwich the first page, um, the top layer, um, and the bottom layer. They're both going to be 150 GSM, and then the middle layer is going to be like a 1.2 millimeter gray board uh, bonded together. So you don't want 200 GSM, otherwise it's, um, there's a lot of, lot of white layer that you can see on the token itself when you when you make it. Um, but otherwise, yeah, this is how you make um, or you know ask for a print in um, your print shop. Um, normally when you do um, you know, more professional printing, you would actually not do it this way. You would actually have um, proper bleed and um, so you, you sort of cut the bleed out. That way you have um, a much better error margin. But given that um, it's easier to do a single cut to cut the two cards out um, rather than applying a bleed to the section that you can sort of cut between, uh, which requires more cuts essentially. So um, yeah, this is essentially how it we make all our game prototypes. Alright, Alistair, where are we? Yeah, so we're at Bunnings. Uh, everyone's, Local favorite, hardware store. everyone's favorite hardware store. So what are we doing here? We're going to get some contact adhesive. 
for the uh, prototyping process. We use that to bond the two sides of the paper together and uh, the paper to the grey board. This is the stuff, this is what we typically get. It's a contact adhesive. Uh, it's you can get it anywhere, any, any hard store, hardware store, there's lots of different types. Uh, this is the one we prefer, Sellies. Um, yeah. Uh, that's interesting. We There are actually a few other ones. So, they these guys, the... These guys, but we find that the, uh, uh, the bond on this one is um, uh, just in the right amount, I guess. Also, um, just the quality of the, the can, we find it, the yeah. nozzle gums up a lot less with this particular type. So you can buy really cheap contact adhesive, but you'll find it'll quickly gum up and then yep. become, it starts to splutter and you get blobs of glue instead of a nice mist. So uh, so why do we use uh, contact adhesives over, say, what is preferred usually, like a PVA glue? Well, it's just faster, mostly. Yeah. Uh, it's cleaner. And yep. It's more expensive, though. It is much more expensive, yes. Uh, the, it's a little more forgiving as well than, uh, I suppose, some uh, other glues because you can reposition it and it's, and it's tacky enough that it will hold nicely. Uh, it doesn't curl, it doesn't yellow. Uh, yep. EVA will take at least a couple of hours to set and then another 24 hours to cure completely. Yep. Whereas this, you give it five minutes to go tacky, and you're done. So for the instant gratification people, That's right. this is what you want yeah. to use. That's it. Um, also, just to give people an idea of the, the cost and such, uh, this one is 18.50 Australian dollars. Um, it's about, what is that, $14 American? Give or take, yeah. Um, and uh, you can probably get about uh, three prototypes, so about 250 to 300 cards bonded using uh, doing it this way. Yeah, so if you do the math, it's not it's not particularly you know not economical. It's not economical, <laughs> but um, for the for the kind of things that we do, and we want to sort of quickly prototype, and uh, this is probably the, the best way to do it. Definitely. So we've set up the uh, home garage, as you can see, with our stocks of games and such. But um, we've set up several stations around the place. And I'll sort of briefly give you a tour of sort of how we make it. Everything that you see, you can buy. In fact, we bought it at our local uh, hardware store just down the road, which you probably already have seen the, uh, the quick footage before this. Um, and um, everything that you see is just off the shelf stuff. Uh, makes it super easy to make. So over here, we've got the, um, the, the cutting station, or what to call it. Um, over here, you've got two different types of roller cutters. My pre preference are these ones. Um, they're sturdier. Um, these are the 45 millimeter um, rotary cut cutters. Um, you can get them uh, essentially at any fabric um, store uh, over here in Australia. It's a spotlight. Um, uh, they're a little bit pricey, but um, they, they get you... Like this one I've had um, and we've made probably a good 30 or 40 prototypes on this. And um, I've only had to swap the, uh, the blade once. So it's pretty good. Um, a cutting board, although preference would not to use this because it really, these things are really expensive and you sort of wear them out really quickly. So your preference would be something harder, you know, something like this, or just to throw up an MDF board, you know, um, something like closer to something like that, um, but more MDF like than that stuff. Um, and uh, just put that on and then just cut through using that because you can swap them out easily. Or you can just go with a, um, a nice heavy duty um, guillotine. Um, this one's particularly good. Um, specifically, the reason why uh, it's good is because um, this sort of holds it down and cuts it, uh, which is what guillotines are really good for. Whereas the, the, with the um, rotary cutters um, method, you sort of have to not only pin down the, the thing, but sometimes it has a tendency to um, slide underneath, the paper will slide underneath, and um, when you're cutting it, it will actually shift. So you kind of have to um, do what I do, sort of figure it out, make sure that you sort of um, 
keep not only the pressure down on the paper on this side, but also keep the pressure down on the um, thing as you, as you cut. Still, my preference is already cut it though, because I'm just used to it. Um, so that's one station. Uh, the second station over here is where we could do the assembly, the bonding, essentially. Um, so this is where we would have the papers. Um, it would get uh, the contact adhesive stuff would be bonded over there. I'll explain that station shortly. Um, papers would then be applied front and back this way. Um, and then the alignment is particularly important. That's why we need plenty of space and lighting to, to do this. Um, for the coins, we'll do similar. So this would actually be applied. Um, this grey board will be cut down. And once it cut, gets cut down, then the two pieces will be bonded, um, aligned and on both sides, and then we cut them down. Because these are circular, we have one punches, and that's where the, uh, the, the punching station, I guess, the one punching, whole punching stations are. These are two different ones that we have. Uh, this one's a 19 mil, and this one's a 24 mil. Um, and these, we just order them from a hardware store again, same thing. Um, and all you need is uh, a really nice, heavy um, hammer, I guess. Put them on, and then you sort of punch them out that way. Again, something that we'll show. Uh, and the adhesive part. Um, the thing that really that is important is um, when you're using this, um, get the throwaway sheet, um, which is paper, brown paper and um, lay them on top. Um, ideally, you probably want something that we use these um, foam uh, uh, as a base, just to makes it elevate a little bit so that when you have something like an A3 page, something like this is A3, you put them on, you've just got enough edge to sort of just carry them, basically, other than trying to sort of thing, use your fingernails to try and sort of pry them open. Um, last but not least is the uh, the finisher, basically, this is the corner cutter. Again, not very expensive at all. It was a uh, hundred. How much was it? One hundred twenty. Mm, um, yeah, about that. Yeah, one hundred twenty dollars. And um, it gives you a really nice professional finish with the cards. You sort of cut them out using these. Um, one trick to them uh, is you have this sort of tendency to be lazy and convenient, and you want us to stack multiple pa um, papers on them and cut them. Uh, I'd advise you not to do that, mostly because when you cut. It has this sort of, um, the, the cards will actually slide, the, the cards underneath will slide out, and then what you get, you'll get this sort of um, angled sort of corner cutting. Um, so you may be able to get away with two or three, no more than that, but we typically just use one card at a time. It's more tedious, but you get a more precise cut. So that's something that we'll show again as well with the corner cutting. Um, that's it. Okay, so this is the spray station. We're going to do the first uh, sheet, which I'll then hand off to Matt, who will align it with the, the top. Um, so first thing with the spray adhesive, you've got to give it a good shape to really mix it up, otherwise you'll get uh, sediment, sort of blobby pieces, and it's not as nice, you get little bumps in the, uh, the final finish. I always just check the, the nozzle first to make sure it's actually spraying properly. And uh, there's no real technique to it. You just want to get full coverage. Uh, too much adhesive, it'll become kind of a little bit moist. Uh, it's not so great. If you don't use enough, it um, when you bond it with the top piece, it, it doesn't give as great an adhesion. So you've got to get that nice happy medium. But you can't go too long. <laughs> sheet so we'll just set that aside uh, you want to set it leave it for probably about a minute just to get a little bit tackier um, and at the same time we'll do the the other side so when they come together it gives a really nice strong bond
Okay, okay. So, do you want to do the one or do you want me to do it? Uh, I don't mind. I can hold one inch. Yeah, sure. Can't I'm going to get that step That's right. Step. That's right. Um, okay, so um, A3 paper, um, all you want to do is you want to line up the edge, um, at least just the one side of the edge. And then what you want to do is that you want to take it across. And just apply that way. You always go from one side to the other to avoid air bubbles. And usually I like to align them on the long edge, that way the, the shift is there's more, more room. To, to the more accurate than it is not doing it that way, other than lining it on this edge, which then will actually get more. So then, yeah, um, that's essentially it for the, the, the bonding process. It's not too bad. Um, and uh, yeah, we just have to do that nine times. Okay, so this, I'm going to show you two methods. Um, guillotine is Alice's preferred method, and ruler cutting, um, or rotary cutting is my preferred. But for the, um, the guillotine, you um, we've provided a set of blue guidelines and all you need to do is make sure that the blue guidelines actually are um, aligned edge to edge. And once that is done, then you place this down. Uh, this piece will actually hold the, uh, the paper down. Um, and uh, as you can see, you can get a, a very precise cut. Um, this is a very, very, very little, little of the, um, the, the actual print actually come out of it which is uh, totally acceptable in this instance. And you just have to do that for other sides. Um, I'll show you the rotary cutting method. Exactly the same. Um, so you just have to line it up. And just apply pressure on the cut. Okay, so we're going to do the corner cutting now. Uh, Alan has prepared the cards. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It has a curved blade on it. it has a couple of guides which uh, get just enough of the, the corner into the, the cutting area. Um, that uh, yeah, it takes off just enough to give you a nice rounded corner. So the trick is you've got to keep it nice and square to the guides. And it doesn't take a lot of pressure. And of course it didn't cut through. That's probably because the glue is still a little bit soft. There we go, that's a bit better. So we'll try that again. Um, so nice and hard against the guides. Nice, nice round cut. That's pretty much. Yeah, go for it. Explain what you're doing. Okay, so um, given that uh, we're doing this sort of greyboard contact method, and noticing that uh, at least in the A4 that the the edge to edge they're not quite equal, so we're worried that it's going to not align. Um, what we then do is want to sort of cut out the edges um, on those so that we can. Uh, be confident that this edge and uh, well, it'll be this edge and this edge or this edge and this edge would actually then align perfectly. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut it first. Um, I'm going to have to clean that up. And this is why I prefer the rotary cutting method. But anyway. So now that we've got one edge cut, when we apply this edge, if we also cut this, and apply to that edge, then we're guaranteed that we're not aligning to uh, the edge of the white, which could actually have the inside of the artwork shifted by the printer. So that's what we're doing. So it's this side and this side. So 
side, hopefully, once this is attached on this edge, that everything is going to line up just right. All right, so uh, this is the wad punch station where we do our uh, chipboard tokens. So you saw earlier that we, we bonded both layers of the tokens to a, a sheet of uh, gray board. Now uh, we're going to use a wad punch, which is typically used in leather working and other sorts of machining. Uh, it just has a, a uh, knife edge on this side. Um, and the token will pop out the top when we uh, bash it through. So it's pretty low tech. Uh, just line the, the punch up with our blue markings. And when we're happy with it, give it a couple of bangs with the hammer. It should come away really easily and then pops out of the, the wad punch and there's the token. Explain that. So here we have the final uh, game. We use the um, same process that we did for um, making uh, making the rest of the game uh, on, with the box. Um, we may have to do that as a separate video because there's, there's a lot of uh, a fair amount of moving parts to it. But it's using grey board and bonded paper. Um, uh, so the process is pretty similar to what we have made for the uh, for the cards and. Um, all the equipment that you see that we've used is exactly the same to, to make this stuff. Um, but uh, we've uh, put our coins in here. These are the ones that we um, punched out. Um, and that's the punch board that you see right here. We made the coins. And the cards. Just sort of splay out the cards. The card back. Um, so nice color, nice card sort of feel. Um, the ingredients. So a few more. That's the salad one. And then the meat side. Um, let's see. The placemat. Uh, bottom bun. A nice little bit of sheen to it, as well as I'm sure I can find it. There is the specials menu. Yeah, it's all looking really good. Um, all made using uh, the stuff that I said that we showed you today. All up, how long did it take us? A couple of hours. Uh, about lunchtime, about four hours yeah, to do right. everything. Um, but that's including, you know, going out, getting all this stuff. Oh yeah, that's the uh, dividing piece um, with the grey board. Uh, you I don't. First? Yes. You went first. Oh, wait, you have to put it on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not yet, wait till the very end. Oh, no. yeah. 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 You, will, you will get that. Oh, unless Andy and I can finish. So you went first, didn't you? So I get a turn.